Hello friends and welcome to our channel Great Saints where we have a look at the lives of some of the great saints from the past in order to receive hope and inspiration for the future. And today let's have a look at some of the miracles of the multiplication of bread and wine. Yes, that's right. Wine. Exactly like I lauded. And he, for instance, at the wedding feast of Cana, he multiplied the wine and then he fed the 5,000 people and both of these were prefigures of what he was going to do in the future, establishing the Eucharist, our spiritual food. Now, in fact, there are many, many saints who multiplied bread, who multiplied food. We can start right back in the Old Testament, Saint Elias, and we can go right through history. Our Lord, of course, we know, Saint Dominic, Saint Francis of Assisi, Catherine of Siena, Elizabeth of Hungary, um, the list continues, Saint Colette, Saint Francis of Paolo, and of course, um, Padre Pio, Saint Pio as well. Therese of Avila, she multiplied wine for the workers. She saw they were thirsty, so she multiplied wine. But let's focus in on just two examples, just two great saints. The great Saint Benedict who founded all of the Benedictine orders. He was busy in the process founding. When the cellar of one of them, of Saint Martin's monastery, came up to him and told Saint Benedict that his charity for the poor had now depleted the supply of bread in that monastery. They had only five loaves remaining. And so what did the saint do? Well, he ordered that those five loaves be distributed among the poor in the area, especially to the most famished. And then he turned to the monks, who were now rather downcast, and he said to them, But why are you saddened at the lack of just a little bread? <laughs> rather put your trust in God. And he said, He treats us, God treats us according to the measure of our faith. And today your faith, faith is small and bread is scarce, the saint said, but tomorrow you shall have in abundance. Well, what did this great saint Benedict mean? Well, the following morning when the monastery woke up, they opened the gates and outside they found 200 sacks of flour. They looked all around, they searched throughout the surrounding areas. They could find no trace, no clue who had put the flour there. And how did he know the flower would be there? Seemingly a tremendous miracle. And now we look at St. Dominic who founded the Dominican order. And St. Dominic on this particular day had sent a brother John and a brother Albert to the city and they were to go there and to beg alms from the people. But they were unsuccessful that day. Except on the return journey they met one lady who gave them one loaf of bread. That was it for the whole monastery. But on the way home, they met someone who had a desperate need, a poor man, and so they gave him the loaf of bread. And then when they met St. Dominic, they explained now what had happened on the situation. And Dominic approved of what they had done. He was satisfied. And he explained, there must have been an angel, this last person, this desperately poor person, they gave the loaf to, must have been an angel testing their faith, testing their generosity. Nevertheless, St. Dominic, he had faith and so he summoned all of the brethren together to the refectory to come and eat. And the table was laid, everything was prepared, the dishes put out, their mugs were placed in front of them. So Brother Henry the Roman now began to read as was the custom. And at this point, St. Dominic, he bowed his head and he began to pray. And now we take this extract from the saint's biographer. St. Dominic praying when suddenly two handsome young men appeared in their midst, in their refractory. And they were carrying over their shoulder two white cloths which were filled with bread. And they began to distribute this bread beginning at the lower rows. They gave one loaf to each brother. And these loaves looked really perfect and they tasted delicious, better than any other bread they had ever tasted. And when they came to St. Dominic, they placed a loaf in front of him and then they bowed their heads and then they simply disappeared. No one knows who they were or where they came from. 
Then another miracle occurred, not long after this. There was only a very little wine left in the cellar. And so the saint, by his prayers, increased the bread and wine, according to the account. And so the friars, they were able to eat very well that day, and they drank, and they ate their fill. And the bread remained the following day. So they ate and they drank their fill again the following day. And on the third day, exactly the same thing. But on the third day, St. Dominic would not allow what remained that had multiplied. So he said, give this to the poor. He distributed it to the poor. And then he finished with a beautiful discourse. So all of this miracle had been done for this discourse to the brethren that they should never distrust the divine goodness, even in their times of greatest need. But what beautiful miracles these all are, similar to our Lord's miracles. But, of course, in the case of St. Dominic, some of the bread and wine they did keep. And these were as relics which people were able to come and look at in the future. Just a reminder to join us in this great saints apostolate. You're very welcome to enroll your mass pre-intentions. Just go to our website and include your, imprint, your intentions there. And these will be said by a priest of the Immaculata, not far from the Holy House of Loreto. We will bring your intentions to Padre Pio in particular there. So please do join us. Go ahead and enroll your Mass Prayer intentions.